Good morning to all of our viewers out there. This is Daniel Piens for Codelingo coming to you live from Bloemfontein, South Africa. Guys, please be patient. I'm giving some time for students to join the live station. In the meantime, to give you a bit of a teaser, we will be talking about um, iconoclasm, uh, damage to art throughout history. All right, so um, please stay tuned. And uh, we will also be talking about models of ability and permission. And uh, yeah, I'll be with you shortly. Thank you. Hello. Hello again, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. So, um, Heidi, it must be about, it's after lunchtime on your side, am I right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Tell me, are you, uh, is, is Japan affected by the, um, what do they call it, the daylight savings time? About what? Uh, the daylight savings time. Is Japan affected by that? I don't know. I, I can't think that it will be. Mm. Right. It's it's like South Africa. I remember the first time someone asked me, do you guys have daylight savings time? I asked him, what's that? <laughs> I don't know. So. <laughs> it's time to hear that. Say again? It's fast time to hear that. All right. Yeah, then I'm pretty sure it won't be. I think it's it's obviously in countries that span a large area. Um, mm. well, not only. No, come to think of it, not only. But I know mm. in the United States they they have it, and and in the UK for some mm. reason um, mm. they have daylight savings time where the time is moved forward or backwards by an hour, or sometimes. Mm. Well, I don't think two hours. I think it's only one hour. Mm. I don't know what or why. I think it it will probably more have more to do with the fact that, um, in well, in winter the days are shorter and in summer the days are longer. And mm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm simply making guesses ah, here. Time, time changing, changing time. Yeah, changing. yeah. When they when they. system. Say again. And we don't have such a system. Maybe uh, right. European countries, for example, Norway, Norway or Denmark, summer yeah. season and uh, winter season, time is much different. Okay. Before I stayed in uh, Denmark, yeah. it was summer season. <coughs> yeah. I woke up at 5. Still already bright. And yeah. I said, Say that um, I ate something before the dinner. Uh, surrounding is very, very bright, still <laughs> daytime. At wow. eight. Then we returned to the hotel. Yeah. Uh, we tried to uh, sleep in the bed, but 10 p.m., still bright. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I presume it's not like that in Japan. Uh, Japan is, uh, yeah, summer season, summer uh, season, the winter season, the daytime is different, but not so much. 
Yeah. What what time does the sun go down normally in summer in Japan? Summer, maybe at seven p.m. It sounds like South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, in, in summer, it's it's usually by seven thirty. It starts getting really dark. No, uh, seven, no, six uh, already dark. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and same here. You know, it's, uh, in in the winter, by six o'clock, in in the middle of winter, by six o'clock, it's it's getting pretty dark. Mm. But um, you know, I, I remember the first time I went to Europe, I, it was terrible. Um, I, I remember one night I was there for work, and we um, well, we were on a, a training course, and one night at nine o'clock, I was standing in my hotel room looking out the window. And it looks yeah. like 4 p.m. in South Africa, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was quite difficult to adapt to that. Yes, I have a yeah. uh, friend in Denmark. He said winter season, almost all daytime it's dark. Uh, even uh, daytime it snows, and the sky was covered by a thick cloud. So almost yeah. all daytime it's dark. Wow. Mm. Sure, it must. I think it's it's an interesting place to to see and to experience that you know that darkness and daytime and snowing and all of that. But I think in South Africa we're very spoiled. Even in even in, in winter, we mm. have bright sunny days. Mm. Um, you know, it's cold, but it's it's bright and sunny. So I think I'll miss the the sunshine. <laughs> no, maybe your country is a um, spring, right? Yeah, at the moment it's it's spring. Um, yeah, so it's the the temperatures are lovely, and mm. we've been we've been having a lot of rain the last few days. Maybe so there are many flowers. It's it's starting to become very beautiful now. Um, <laughs> they they have. Uh, I'm trying to think what time is it. I'm quickly going to Google it to see if I can find out what time of year it is. But we have a. Area called Namakwaland, um, and they have whoa, uh, they have the most amazing flowers um, in springtime. Now I'm trying mm -hmm. to see what time is it. Uh, let's have a look if we can see. But it must be around October, November. If I'm not mistaken, but I can't find any information quickly. But mm. Namakwaland is is absolutely gorgeous. Um, mm. I don't know if I've if I've showed you these pictures before, but like I'm going to cherry blossom in Japan. Yeah, but you know, I think the cherry blossoms. Wow, that's something I would love to see in, uh, in my <laughs> life still. I've seen pictures of that and it's gorgeous. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, mm, very yeah, there we go. This is, yeah, Namakwaland. And it's, you know, like I said, it's absolutely gorgeous. Mm. But in the, in, in the high summer, come, let's say, about December, it's, it's a desert. Oh. So only for a short period every year, it looks mm. like this. And. Oh. The the rest of the year it is literally a desert. Mm. So it's it's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Now the, the the rest of the year I'd say it looks like this. It's it's grey and and greenish, you know, but, but a very mm, uninspiring green, you know. It's it, it's really a, a desert area. Mm. And then uh, and then that short period every year it's absolutely beyond gorgeous <laughs> mm -hmm. anyway yeah so um, tell me a little bit about the cherry blossoms in Japan please Heidi cherry blossoms are very small but um, yeah. they bloom blooms uh, once together suddenly yeah so it's like pink cloud <laughs> pink cloud <laughs> every, wow. everywhere mm, very beautiful and there's a lot of cherry trees in Japan, am I right? Yeah, yeah. There are many uh, cherry trees anywhere. Yeah. A park or a street. Okay. All right. In in South Africa, we've got one 
area where they have cherry trees and they have the cherry mm -hmm. festival every year. Um, mm -hmm. It's about 200 kilometers from where I live, but mm -hmm. you know, it's nothing like in Japan. I, I've seen pictures in Japan and there's just cherry blossoms wherever you look. Um, the, the area where they, they grow the cherries in South Africa is uh, Fixburg. It's called yeah. Fixburg. And like I said, they have the cherry festival and everything, but it, it just doesn't compare to the pictures I've seen of Japan's cherry blossoms. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so, so what time of year uh, do you guys have the cherry blossoms? Mm, end of uh, March to uh, the early time of April. Only one week or two weeks. Wow. So if yes. I want to come and visit during the the right time, I've got to be very, very uh, well planned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm quickly trying to see if I can find some pictures of Fixburg's cherry blossoms, but um, just to give you an idea, Heidi, this is. Uh, when you, I know, I mean, when you look on the internet for pictures of J Japanese cherry blossoms, you see yeah. all these beautiful pictures. Yeah. And I've, yeah. I've looked for Fixburg cherry blossoms, and this is the uh, only picture I get. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's nothing like Japan, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, Heidi, I remember the... I think about, was it a week or two weeks back, uh, you were the only person in the class when we talked about damage to art. Do you remember I that guess. class? So we're continuing that today. <laughs> All right. Um, I've, I've got the, uh, the thing lined up, the article lined up, and we're going to take it from uh, more or less where we left off the last time. So I'm going to yeah. give you the link. Um, and and then we're gonna. I'm giving you the link so you can you can go there in the meantime. And okay. also, let me tell you which page we're going to. Okay. Oh. I'm not Hello? sure which. Can you hear me, Heidi? No. Hello. Hello. No, I can hear you. All right. Okay. Anyway, there we go. So. Um, let me just tell you more or less, um, the pages aren't numbered, but it's more or less halfway through the little icons at the top of that block. You remember, if, you, if you've got it open, you'll see there's the little pictures at the top. More yeah, or less yeah. ha halfway in, it's the surveillance photographs of militant suffragettes. Ah, I saw this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, uh, ninth. Ninth. Tenth. Yeah, we saw that. Eleventh, I, I already saw. Yeah, ah. we saw the one hanging upside down, and we saw the head of William the Third, and it's just yeah. after the head of William the Third. William the Third, yes, I think so. All right, yeah. So it's just after that, the surveillance photographs of militant suffragettes. Yeah. All right. All right, so let me, oops, I just want to quickly do something here. Um, um, yeah, I think we should, we should probably start with some grammar. <laughs> so let's, let's not start with the fun stuff. Let's do the grammar first. Yeah. And I'm going to have a look at that in a second. I'm just quickly looking or, or connecting something here. Uh, um. Suffragette. All right. All right, so there we go. I've got all my, all my stuff lined up. All right, so we are talking about models of ability and permission. All right. Can, what can you tell me about that, Heidi? Heidi, are you still with me? Yes, yes. Models of reduction. No, no. Models of ability and ability permission. Can. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> ability. I can. Yeah, exactly. I can do that. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, can is, I, th I think, the, if I can put it this way, the most famous one. And it's... Yeah. Uh, all of them pretty much derived from the word can. Other, other things that can, could, may. Yes, exactly. But like I said, you know, they're all derived from can, if you, if you can put it that way. Because could will only be the, you know, another form of can, but and then may. All right, so it's all, those are our models of ability and permission. All right, but let's start from the beginning. Uh, they say that there are many types of modal verbs, and um, we're focusing today on obviously models of ability and permission. Now, keep in mind, modals are used to express the mood of a verb, all right, um, such as ability, possibility, or other conditions. And you do not conjugate modal verbs, and they cannot be used without a main verb. That's very important. And the most common Models of ability and permission are can, could, and may. Exactly what you said. All right, so the main modal of possibility and ability is can. You can use can uh, when talking about something in the present and the future. All right, for example, Mary can dr drive a truck or they can fly the new Boeing airplane. All right, so the construction there is we take the subject plus can plus the verb. And then could is used for talking about things in the past. And in that case, we take the subject plus could plus the verb. For example, Jenny could sleep just a few hours last night. Um, or I could eat as much as I wanted when I was younger. Then you can use, not can, you use could have when talking about an ability or an opportunity that you had but that you did not do. All right, for example, I could have gone to the party or she could have danced all night with him. Then there are negative forms of can and could. And example of that would be I can't swim or Tim couldn't work on the project. All right, again, the construction is very easy, very simple. We have subject plus cannot or can't or couldn't or could not plus the verb. All right, then models are often used to make polite requests. The models of permission uh, in order of politeness are may, could, can. All right, so Heidi, can I ask you, can you make a sentence for me, a polite question with May. May question? Yes, please. May I uh, may I uh, borrow your computer? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'll put it in the box and I'll send it right up to you. <laughs> All right, that's that's it. Very good. All right, then. Can you make a polite request, polite sentence with for me with could? Could. Um, uh, oh, could you? It's very common. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Favor, favor. Uh, could you pick me up uh, in a station tomorrow? Perfect. All right. And how about can? Can. Mm hmm can you uh, can you lend me some money? There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely spot on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they say then there are a few ways that you can answer polite questions. Yeah. Um, so let's let's look at the question. May I borrow your computer? Yeah. No. No, we... you may. No, you may not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> No, you may not. Um, that's that's very short and, and sweet, short and simple. You could also <laughs> say, no, you may not borrow my computer. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, I think people, when you tell people, no, you may not borrow my computer, if you <laughs> use long sentences, they think, there's a chance I can still convince this person. 
<laughs> all right. So anyway, um, all right. So okay. I'm sorry. I can't rent you my computer. It's very impo important for me. Then after that, I need to use uh, this computer. I'm sorry. That's very very polite way of answering it. <laughs> yeah, that was very good. <laughs> all right. All right, or you know, you have some. Some of us have friends that uh, don't take no for an answer. You know, if you try to explain to them, they'll just make up excuses. So sometimes we just say, "No, you may not," like you said. Exactly. No, you may not. <laughs> all right. So there is definitely a place for all of that. But uh, let's return to our lesson material. Um, all right. So let's let's start looking at yes. All right, for yes, we have two ways. Um, mm. First is the more formal way, where you um, take yes plus the subject plus may. Uh, mm. For example, yes, you may borrow my computer. Yeah. Um, all right, or there's the less formal way, where you say, um, yes, you can borrow my computer. Mm. All right, mm. so we use may when it's more formal and can when it's less formal. Mm -hmm. And then for no, there are three ways. Uh, the first one, the most formal one, is no, you may not borrow my, com my computer. All right, so we take no plus the subject plus may not. Um, then the second one, which is not so formal, is no plus the subject plus cannot. Uh, we will say no, you cannot borrow my computer. Mm -hmm. Or the third one, which is least formal, will you where you'll take no plus the subject plus can't. All right, so you'll say no, you can't borrow my computer. Mm. Yeah. All right. Great stuff. All right, Heidi, is there anything that you might like to add or ask? I can't imagine you asking something about this, but if you have any questions or anything you might like to add. No, I don't have any questions. All right, great stuff. In that case, let's return to Iconoclasm and let's get our damaged art back on the screen. Yeah. And we started surveillance photographs of militant suffragettes. Mm. Um, would you like to read for us, Heidi? Okay. Attacks on art were am uh, among the dramatic protests. Suff uh, suffragette, what that <laughs> suffragette. Suffragette. Yeah. suffragette. Yeah, you could say suffragette or suffragette. I see some a people pronounce it as suffragette. Mm. Suffragette carried out in uh, their campaign to get women at the vote. These are examples uh, of the state use of uh, surveillance a photograph a photography show how they are uh, letters uh, made rule to Edward, Edward in uh, Britain. Suffragette art attacks uh, included damaging the paintings in the Manchester Art Gallery in 1913. Uh, museums banned umbre umbrellas, uh, banned umbrellas and other uh, dangerous uh, female accessories. All right, good. <laughs> Umbrellas are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you can poke a, a hole in a painting with an umbrella, so that's got to be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Well, Adi, do you know what the word suffragette means? Suffragette? I don't know. Suffragette. Suffragette is um, a female advocate. Oh. All right. Or someone who's willing to suffer for their cause. Mm, yeah. All right. Okay. Mm. Let's look at the next one. Oh, okay. okay. Um, can uh, even female can vote? Uh, that kind of right? Huh? Huh? No. Uh, please repeat the question, Heidi. Uh, suffrage. Suffrage means uh, kind of uh, right. To uh, for female to vote and election. Yes, yes, yes. They uh, 
a, a suffragette is, like I said, someone, a uh, female, who um, is willing to suffer for a cause or who is an advocate. And specifically these women, uh, mm -hmm. these women were advocates of women's rights and yeah. women's right to vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's read our next one. If you read. Oh, uh, John Singer Sargent, portrait of Henry James, 1913. Looking at this uh, uh, sombre, sombre portrait of the author of the uh, Wings of a Dove, it seems far removed from uh, politics or uh, violence. Yet when the, this painting was shown at the Royal Academy, summer exhibition in 1914. It was attacked by a suffragette called Mary Ward. She uh, slashed it three times with a meat cleaver. Never, uh, neither James nor a sergeant were known as anti-feminist. Uh, All right, neither of them were known as anti-feminists. Oh. Yeah, that's quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments on this one, Heidi? Oh, I I can't see it. I, I can't see any, any place. Oh. Yeah, I don't see any damage either. I presume yeah, that yeah. they they had a professional fix it. Ah, okay. Yeah, because they have these. And well, I've I've once seen. Uh, a guy in action who fixed a painting that was also slashed by someone mm. and it's amazing I, I think it was on Discovery Channel um, it was amazing to see how this guy fixes the painting at the end when he's finished with it you can't even see that it was damaged oh mm -hmm. yeah restored already yeah fully restored okay yeah. oh. All right, so whenever you're ready, let's move to the next one. What's this? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't see this one coming. <laughs> All right, but let's let's see. <laughs> Chia, Alan Jones. This pop art uh, sculpture takes the male dominant, dominated sexual violation of the 1960s into the uh, realm of the uh, grotesque. It is inspired the decor the, uh, the of the Korova Milk Bar in Stanley uh, Kubrick's film. Oh, really? I don't know. A clockwork orange and now that seem to belong to a par parallel sci-fi. Uh, universe of uh, rampant um, misogyny, misogyny, and surprisingly, it was attacked in 1986 by feminist pro protesters who threw paint to ripper at it. <laughs> All right, yeah, I can't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it looks to me like it's a chair. Mm, yeah. It's yeah, but it is quite grotesque. I must admit. Yes, I think so. You, you're familiar with the word grotesque. Yes. All right. Are we had disgusting, like. Yes, yes. Something that is shocking and, like you said, disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Let's look at the next one, Heidi. I I know standard cubic, cu cubic. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, he was. He was quite a. Was or is? I'm not even sure. Is he still alive? Um, but quite an an interesting person. Uh, made some very interesting films. Yeah, and I maybe I saw this movie, Clockwork Orange. Yeah. But I. I'm. Understand. I'm afraid I haven't. Yeah, sorry. I, yes. I couldn't understand that movie. Very difficult. All right. I haven't seen it at all. So <laughs> I'm definitely going to... I remember when the movie came out. 
Um, mm. It's, yeah, it, it was quite a, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, controversial film, apparently, but I haven't that's, seen it. That's a violence, violence movie. The story is uh, at the follow, not the following story. Suddenly it skipped the other scene. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't understand. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to have a look if I can find, if I can, can get a hold of that movie and... Uh, because uh, I'd like to see it because it's, I think, quite a, what's the, yeah, qu quite a, a memorable piece of movie history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> All right, let's look at our next one, Heidi. Okay. Carl Andrew, equivalent to 8th, 1966. In 1976, a visitor to the Tate threw blue liquid all over car under to a horizontal, horizontal array of 120 fire bricks. It turned out to be a vegetable day, a vegetable dye, easily mm -hmm. removed. The attack was a, a culmination of a, a bitter torrent of public invective and the mock carry after the page bought uh, under to bricks. Maybe it show it should have revealed the price, which was just two two thousand two hundred and ninety-seven pounds if uh, sold today. Equivalent it would be uh, worth at least one million pounds. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> for this a bunch one? of bricks. One million pounds. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would pay that for a bunch of bricks. <laughs> yeah. Any questions or comments on that, Heidi? Uh, question mark. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, die. Vegetable die. Vegetable die. die. Yeah. Oh, Dye is a colorant. Ah, cool. Like like when you color your clothes, when you change the color yeah. of your clothes, um, mm. you use a dye. Ah, that the same means a hair dye. Or like a hair dye, yes. Oh, I see. Yes. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. And another one, mockery. Mockery. Yeah. Mockery means um it's it's making fun of um, but public mockery means that the public made fun of something uh, you know you mockery. you make fun of or yeah you mock mm. something oh, okay any other oh. questions Heidi? Uh, no question all right great let's look mm. at our next one next one uh, this one. Okay. What this picture? Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> ah. ah, gas mask. Wearing gas mask. Yeah, he's wearing a gas mask. <laughs> Oh, this is odd. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, but will you read that for us? Oh, the destructive art, the activist activities of Gustav Metzger. Gustav Metzger grew up Jewish in uh, Nuremberg, Nuremberg as a child. He saw a Nazi a para a parade in his city, sent to Britain as a, a refugee. He refused to let go of his anger. In the 1960s, he pioneered auto-destructive art, uh, creating and destroying in the same gesture. 
painting on a plastic with acid was a way to make art yet leave no commodity to be sold. A major fund included the food pit uh, township uh, from Medga, inspired to smash guitars on, on stage. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right. Any questions or comments on this one, Heidi? <laughs> no question. I do, do find it quite odd that you would paint on plastic using acid. So you yeah. yeah, like you're destroying your own work. Yeah, Andy Wolfor. Uh he mm -hmm. he put some parasol, very big parasols in the town. Many parasols. Yeah. So he took pictures. I couldn't understand. <laughs> Is it art or not? Yeah, that's also. <laughs> I think it's it's quite a different form of art. <laughs> yes, yes. Even yeah. he came to Japan. Now uh, he put some maybe parasol, very big parasol. Mm -hmm. Then he took picture. He went to China or somewhere. Yeah. So people cooperated, collaborated with him. They helped. Yeah. But I, I couldn't understand <laughs> his art. Yeah, what what did you say is his name? Um kind of strange. <laughs> Very strange. But but what is his name, Heidi? Sorry, I didn't get his name. Yeah. That um, that ar artist's name, the guy that took the photographs? Yes, yes, yeah, photographs. Yeah, but what's his name? Do you know? Name I don't know. All right. Okay, no, because I want to go and, and see if I can find that, because it, it sounds interesting, but like you say, I'm not sure if it's art. <laughs> all right. His art. He wandered around all, all over the world. He put mm -hmm. a very big, uh, wide textiles on the city or town, or yeah. covered, covered the buildings. But I couldn't understand his, his art. Yeah, that's quite, quite, I think, quite different, quite unique, yes, and quite yes. strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's have a look at the next one. Jake and the Dinos, uh, Chapman. One day you will no longer be loved. 2008. The Chapman brothers have from when it come to uh, have form. When it come to destroying the art in 2003, they doodled on a set of Goya's prints to create their own Sarit uh, commentary on war on the uh, plagi plagiarism. Pla plagiarism. Plagiarism, yes. Plagiarism. Here they ap appropriate and uh, this. Is this figure an original 19th century work by an unknown artist? The sense of desecration, okay, is a desecration. Desecration is disturbing. Is, is this art a brutality, brutality or both? Yeah, there's an interesting question. What is your opinion, Heidi? Is this, you know, do, taking an original painting, even though it's from an unknown artist, but a, a 19th century painting, taking that and desecrating it like this, do you mm. think it is art or is it brutality or could it be both? What do you think? Uh, I don't think it's, um, um, maybe it's art for the, some people, but mm -hmm. not attractive for me. Yeah, I quite agree. But do you do you think it could just be brutality? I don't think it's brutality. It's a kind of art. Is it a kind of art? Yes. All right. Yeah, because I also can't make up my mind there. 
uh, I think what they did to this painting is disturbing almost in a sense. Mm. But anyway, yeah. Let's have a look at the next one. The uh, Burlington House ch cut cartoon. 1499 to 15, uh, 1500. On 17 July 1987, a man took a short, shotgun into the National Gallery, Gallery and blasted this Leonardo drawing. The shot was aimed at the virgin's breast. It took two years to restore in the National Gallery's workshop. And it is easy to see the damages. Increase the uh, portion. Luck luckily, none of uh, the facts were hit. None of the faces. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, none, of, none of the faces will hit. This is one of the uh, saddest acts of violence against art. I don't know what purpose. Uh, yeah, I can't see why you would do that. Mm, it's a very good picture, Leonardo. Yeah, it's an exceptional picture. Wow. Yes, yes. Yeah, sure. Any questions on that, Heidi? Uh, no question. All right, great. Let's have a look at this next one. Okay. Ruben. Copy of the Battle of uh, uh, Angari, Angari by Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, Leonardo da Vinci again. Leonardo da Vinci mm. was uh, commissioned by the Florentine Republic to paint the vis vis visceral scene. Visceral scene. Visceral. Visceral. Visceral mm. scene of violence. The Battle of Angiari in the early uh, 1500s, when the Medici family uh, defeated the Repub Republic, their soldiers were ordered to lay west the hill, uh, the whole, uh, uh, whole where he had worked. Modern attempt to re rediscover uh, this enigmatic a painting, you know, this evidence that it was deliberately, deliberately uh, trashed. All right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Any, any questions on this one, Heidi? Uh -huh. I saw this uh, picture once. Yeah. This is a very terrible uh, art, right? There are many people are dying under the horse. Yeah. And, uh, he's uh, cutting his uh, head, maybe. Yeah, it, it looks like the, he's cutting the other guy's head off. Yes, yes. It, it is pretty, pretty terrible. Ah, you, usually Leonardo da Vinci the art are very quiet and beautiful. Mm. Yeah, this is, I think, quite different. <laughs> scary. Scary, yeah, very scary. And yeah. uh, if you look at the realism and, mm. and the, the soldiers' faces and even the horses, you can, you can see the fear. Yeah. So actually, it's it's brilliantly done, but it's it's scary. Yeah, very scary. Mm. I can see some evil face and the horse. Yeah. Wow. All right. Are we going to have a look at the next one? We've got we've got about two minutes left. Okay, Velasquez. Uh, rock, rock by Venus, 1647 to 51. In March in 1914, Mary Mary Ri, uh, Ricard, Richardson. Richardson. Uh, Richardson. Mm -hmm. Richardson <laughs> entered the National Gallery in uh, London with a 
a meat cleaver hidden, cleaver hidden about the person. She made for the uh, rock, rock by, rock mm -hmm. uh, Venus by uh, Bella Velasquez and slashed it again and again. Richardson was uh, protesting the rearrested re <coughs> re of suffragette Emmy Emily uh, Punk Hart Hart. Uh, mm -hmm. She said that the paintings. Uh, a financial value made it a good object of protest, but also the, that she disliked it. The white scars where her slash in Venus the back where repaired can still be seen. Okay, yeah, I see one there. <laughs> Wow. Now, what is your opinion on that, Heidi? Hmm. This is very good picture. Hmm. Velasquez. Yeah, it is. I think it's it's sad that someone would damage a painting just because of its value. Yeah. You know, if it was if it was anti-feminist art, um, then I would say yes. Mm. You, you, you've got a point, but my opinion is I don't think it was uh, a good call damaging a painting just because of its financial value. Yes, yes. Oh. Well, anyway. Do you know, recently, last year, it happened in Spain. Mm -hmm. A woman, uh, woman restored uh, art on the church. It was fresco art. At first, yeah. it was Christ. Jesus Christ face. Yeah. But, uh, in the air, it's getting shabby. Then woman uh, proposed the church. I I can restore it. <laughs> she ha she, but um, the result is much different from the original. Do you know that? No, I didn't know. <laughs> oh really? It's like <laughs> monkey. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah. All right. Not, uh, not, not like uh, Jesus Christ. Much different. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's... Then people in that place uh, got angry, but mm -hmm. it's uh, getting news in the worldwide. So after that, there are many tourists who come to that the town. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So at first it got the people angry, but then in the end, it brought tourism in for the town. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if, I, if I find that picture, I'll send you <laughs> later. Please do that, Heidi, if you can find that picture. You can love it. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely. I would love to see it. I'd <laughs> yeah. have, a, have a good laugh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, anyway, Heidi, I'm afraid that we are out of time. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much for uh, yeah. participating. And yeah, as always, bye -bye. it was great seeing you. And enjoy bye -bye. your day. <laughs> right. Take care. Bye-bye, Heidi. Bye -bye.